alongside with this, what we could call an ethical education, Dante has to learn what humility is. There is an ethical education. Learn about what this humility is about. There is also an aesthetic education going on. Simultaneous. After all, Dante is really looking at art. So the question is, what is the relationship between the virtue and art? How can the two be together? And to give you an idea of how complicated the problem is, is then the next canto, Dante goes on meeting all the painters. You read Canto 11, Giotto and Cimabue, who are emblems of people who invest their productions with an inordinate val sense of their, its value. Then Dante puts himself, puts his friends, Guido Cavalcanti, you remember the two Guidos, and Guido Winizelli, he says one Guido removed uh, the other Guido from its nest, and now the third person has come, meaning himself, who probably will rout both of them. What a proud statement. It is as if the artists are always prone to this sort of inordinate idea of who they are and what their value may be. So art and humility and pride. This is the issue. The ethical education and the aesthetic education. Where is the aesthetic education? Virgil is telling Dante how to look. That's really the most complicated thing for those of you who are doing art history. That's really what it's about. How do we look? What do the eyes really reveal to us? Do not keep thy mind only on one part. That's, that's the looking. We, the, the belief that we, or the temptation to lose sight of the totality of things and, not, uh, and, and, and just taking one part for the whole. Uh, Do not keep thy mind only on one part, said the kind master, who had me on that side of him where the heart lies on the left, so that I turned my face and saw beyond Mary on the same side as he that prompted me another story set on the rock. So Dante has to learn how to look, and what he's looking at are stories. Story, the word is Greek, for those of you who know some Greek, it comes from I saw and I narrate. And it's the same etymology from, for story and history. This is a little bit of an allegory of history, where you see, as if Dante really begins with the New Testament, the story of Mary. Now we're going to see a picture from the Old Testament, David dancing in front of the ark, and then an episode of Trajan, the emperor, who is an example of humility. So see him in a moment. And the point is that the whole of history is a, an allegory of humility, and that's God's art. That's what Dante uh, has God represent for us. First of all, David is humbling himself. He's dancing. He lifts up his, uh, his ephod, his dress, and starts dancing out of joy. It's, it's an episode that is used as uh, one of the many cases of so-called ludic theology, playful theology, this intrusion that in, in, uh, in, the, in the plan of salvation there is always the presence of this comedy, this I comic idea, and David embodies that. Okay, and then there's this little phrase which we, you must have noticed appears so often in this canto, more often in this canto than ever before in the whole poem, more and less, more and less. It is as if it's impossible to use or find in a canto where measure is the issue, the precision about where we are, who we are, and what we are doing. But one thing is clear, that opposite to David, there is his wife, Mikol, sitting at the window, a different perspective. And what she sees, this is art, this is a question of perspective. What she sees, she is so angry at David because he is, by his action of dancing in front of the ark, is humiliating himself. He's losing his state as king. He's losing his stature as king. The fact is that for Dante, Mikol is completely missing the point. It is a stance of someone who thinks that she's superior, a stance of someone who's sitting at the great at the window of her great palace will not have anything to do with what's below her. We are entering the world or the, 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 the domain of what pride may be, what's wrong with pride, and why pride may really be a sin. Pride may not be a sin because of we want to reach higher than we are. Well, that's probably okay. 
What makes pride a sin is that we tend to have contempt for what we think is below us. That's really the displacement. It blinds us. So I'm, I'm introducing here, since this is a world of art, the notion of a perspective. We have been talking about perspective. Pride is tied to perspective. Because he said, t I, by being proud, I think that I have within myself, I certainly have a view of myself that may be at odds with the reality of me, right? Certainly this is the case of not David, but it's the case of Mikol, his wife.